So I teach people how to, you know, create another stream of income through selling name brand products on Amazon. So it's a lot different than when you hear Amazon FBA or people selling on Amazon, a lot of times they're talking about like AliExpress, Alibaba, and uh, that's cool and all. You can make a lot of money doing that, but you still have to be a master marketer and marketing isn't an easy thing to do. Not everyone's good at marketing, Mm -hmm. but what people don't know is you can partner with big name brands like Sony, Logitech, Fiji that are already good at marketing. They're already getting traffic on Amazon and you can just buy their products wholesale and then sell it for retail on Amazon. So that's what I teach people how to do. I don't understand. Okay, so let's say for example, uh, Fiji, right? Fiji is a big company. Um, They have a listing on Amazon that has hundreds of thousands of reviews. They're doing millions a month on Amazon, right? Fiji, the water company? Yes. Okay. They have a whole staff dedicated to selling their products in bulk at wholesale prices to third party sellers like myself. Mm -hmm. So anyone can literally partner with companies like Fiji, buy their products in bulk at wholesale prices and then resell them on Amazon. So instead of creating your own brand, instead of creating your own product, you can just start by partnering with a company that already has the customers, already has the traffic and then sell it on Amazon. What is the most money in a year that you've made from an actual store, Amazon store? So from one Amazon store, the most I've ever made was $2 million dollars. And that's without ever touching a product, ever shipping a product, or ever spending a dime on marketing. Because I do it through the uh, FBA platform, which stands for for Fulfillment by Amazon, meaning all of my inventory is stored in Amazon's warehouse. And as I get orders, Amazon ships it directly to my customer. You made $2 million from a store that you didn't have to have the inventory. And you didn't have to, what what I'm intrigued about is the marketing. You didn't have to market it. How do people know? Yes. So, you know, brands like Fiji, people already know them. They spend the millions in marketing every year already. So you don't have to run additional ads to get people to buy. Ask yourself, when was the last time you questioned whether you should buy something on Amazon or not? Especially if it's from a big brand that Mm -hmm. people know that have commercials on TV. You know, that's why you don't have to do any marketing to sell these products on Amazon. Okay. So... Through this conversation, you'll walk me through that, right? Right, of course. But I'm, I am, I'm also interested in something else. So, well, you're, okay, last year, you as an entrepreneur, what was your revenue? Did over $10 million. $10 million? Yeah. From one man. Yeah, I mean, I got a team, but. Golly. <laughs> what did you do before that, the year before that? So, the year before that was actually my first million dollar year. So, we managed a 10x the very next year, just doubling down on what was already working. Last year, 10 million. Mm-hmm. The year before that, 1 million. Yeah. Are you married? No. Did you get anybody pregnant in this? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you run up that fast. You know, your life gets wild. What's the hardest part? <laughs> What's the hardest thing that you had to deal with by going from 1 million to 10 million? Because that can't be easy. I think it was just managing more people. So I've always, when I, I did 1 million basically by myself. It was me, a video editor, and then a VA. And that was just the seven figure business, just us three. Um, and then to get to 10 million, I added 20 more people into my company. Dang. So it was just managing those people. But then I realized that I could hire someone to actually manage those people. So I have a COO now, CMO. So, you know, what I realized is the quick, the quicker you become the dumbest person on your team, the faster you'll actually scale. So now it's like, it used to always be me trying to figure out the play. And now I just sit in the meeting like, yo, what's the play? You know, let me, <laughs> let me know the play. I'm, I'm going to run it. I like so that. That's how we grew. I like that. Okay. So where, where were you before you started this journey of being on Amazon? Like, yeah, yeah. So um, I used to play sports like all my life. So sports was basically all I did. I grew up in a single mother household, so it was me, my mom, and my two little brothers. And uh, from an early age, I witnessed my mom work very hard, but not make a lot of money. And I think that actually helped me in my entrepreneurial journey because I understood early on that working hard doesn't equal making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta work smart. Sometimes though. Sometimes, but you know, we have, you know, you see jobs, like especially my community, the Hispanic community, you know, we're doing all these hard labor jobs, construction, like flooring, like all this stuff. That doesn't equal making a lot of money. There's smarter ways to make money. Um, And from an early age, I found that out. And at at the age of 17, I actually caught a felony charge, which was terrible because uh, we were already in a bad financial situation. And I literally had to watch my mom put the money together to 
get lawyers and, and, and bail me out and everything. And I ended up getting a, a five year probation, which I just got off of a couple 17 months ago. 17 years old. You mm-hmm. got a felony charge. And in Georgia, you get tried as an adult, even though you're 17. Yeah. What'd you do? So, or allegedly, it was my first entrepreneurial journey. So, I was working at Dick's Sporting Scammer? Goods. Nah, I was working oh. at Dick's Sporting Goods. And, uh, you know, I was already reselling shoes in high school. I was doing everything that I could to make money. And then eventually it got to the point where really I got in it by accident. Someone asked me, they were like, yo, if I pay you, can you give me a discount at Dick's? And I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. And eventually it just, everyone started coming to me with that same play. Um, mm. And I, it started getting bad because I started coming to school and I was like, wait, hold up, everyone's dripped. You know, everyone got the new Patagonia. Right. Everyone got the new Nike Tech. And it was because they were getting it through me. So it got to the point where I would go to first period, get like seven cash apps, $50. Second period, another like seven, eight cash apps. So I was making money just giving people discounts at the store that I was working for. And wow. they were tracking all of this. Um, so they are. Oh, so they're like, yo, how is this kid buying all this stuff for himself? Yeah, I mean, they just, I mean, they do inventory checks and stuff. I was just being stupid back then. But they waited for me to get over the felony count in merchandise. Oh, wow. And then that's when they got me. I got arrested in the mall, walked out in cuffs, everything. By using like, your discount. Mm-hmm. How, did, did you have to, like, go through somebody to use your discount, or you could just ring it up yourself? No, you could just ring it up. So you ring it up, put in your own little discount, and then you Yeah. Dang. Yeah, so. But you was lit. Went through that. You was the man for a minute. <laughs> for, for a little bit, yeah. So I went through that. Uh, after that, I got a job at an Amazon warehouse. So mm-hmm. I started working from 6 p.m. to 4 a.m., um, and then at 10 a.m., I would actually go to school at Georgia Gwinnett College. Oh, wow. So I was barely sleeping, gained a lot of weight during that time. And uh, I had to pick one, you know, do I want to make money or do I want to go to school? And I was never good at school. All right. So I just dropped school and I just started working at Amazon full time. And that's actually when I found out that you can be a seller on Amazon. And I was seeing the whole operation from the inside looking out because I actually used to load the semi trucks mm-hmm. with these Amazon packages and um, what did you see? So I, I was seeing the actual products that were selling. I was like, dang, I'm loading all these semi trucks with dog food. I'm loading all these semi trucks with these different electronics. And I started looking more into like the volume that Amazon was doing. And I got caught in the algorithm of like making money online. So I started seeing the Ty Lopez ads, mm. all the other Amazon FBA ads. And I just I tried everything. Like I started doing social media marketing. I started doing affiliate marketing. I started flipping iPhones on eBay. Like I tried wholesale real estate stocks everything and in e-commerce was kind of what stuck with me because um it just made the most sense to me and i made my first 100k at 19 uh drop shipping on Mm. shopify so this is actually before i started selling on amazon but um the only thing with that is i I had to learn facebook ads and i started to understand that just because you have a good product doesn't mean you're going to make a lot of money you still have to be good at marketing Got it. And that's why Amazon intrigued me because I realized that the marketing piece is already there. It's already solved for you. Got so it. you literally just have to focus on finding name brand products and building these relationships with suppliers. All right. So I have, I'm in a podcast space, right? So right. actually I go to Amazon to get these mics and mixers and cameras. Like mm-hmm. we get everything on Amazon. Are you saying one, I could have got it at a discount and two, I can tell people the stuff that I'm using and make money. So basically, yeah, all this equipment that you have in this room, uh, for example, this is a Sure mic, right? You probably, you didn't actually buy it from Sure and you didn't actually buy it from Amazon. You bought it from a third party seller like me that has a wholesale account with Sure that then listed it on Amazon. And then when when you bought it, their inventory is in Amazon's warehouse already. So it got shipped to you with prime shipping and then they got paid. Hold on, so even if the company even if the company on Amazon says, sure. Right, it'll say sure, but if you actually look under the buy now button, it'll be like company, sure, sold by, and then it'll have the seller's name, and then it'll say shipped by Amazon. I'm going to Amazon right now. So I yeah, over half of the products on Amazon's platform are sold by third-party sellers. So they actually need more sellers because we, like without us, they wouldn't be able to, you know, do what they do because Amazon makes their money off just the platform itself. They take a percentage of every sale, but okay. they don't actually really sell products. Amazon doesn't sell products at all. Hold on. The only products that they sell are like the Amazon basics, okay. which is like the generic stuff. Okay. So this isn't sure the company 
that is selling the shore products. Mm-hmm. That's smart. So can I? So can there only be like one? Can I have my own shore store? No, there can be multiple sellers. So you know, as long as you have an LLC and resellers permit, which you know LLC, you go to the Secretary of State, get your LLC. Resellers permit, you go to the Department of Revenue website and you can get your resellers permit. In Georgia, it's free. Those are the two things that any brand will require for you to open up a wholesale account with them. And then once you have that, you can list their product on Amazon. Got it. Okay. Is there a qualification? Like you got to be in business a certain amount of time. Do they look at you to say, okay, this is a. So it's more so like the bigger the brand, the harder it is to get accepted because they get a lot of applications, but there's a lot of smaller brands that still do very well on Amazon. Give me an example. Um, So for example, let's say uh, you walk into Kroger, right? You walk down the the paper towel aisle, aisle, you see Bounty, right? It's a big brand. And then you see other paper paper towel brands that may be not as big as Bounty, Mm -hmm. but they're still in the store. You know, they're still doing some type of volume. Those are the brands you want to go after. That makes sense. Like you got Gatorade, you got Powerade. Prime just came out. Prime is the brand you want to go after. So it's like those type of brands that they're not as big as the Gatorade, but they still do volume. Got it. And they still want to do business because it it's a win for them to sell 100 units all at once. Mm-hmm. And then you deal with selling it on Amazon. So they I do buy that. the 100 units. Yeah. So you're buying the products in bulk at yes. wholesale prices, but the inventory isn't actually being shipped to you. It's being shipped to Amazon's warehouse. Amazon holds it. And as you get orders, they ship it to your customers and they start paying you out. What are the margins you think? So the margins just depend. Um, if you're if you have a wholesale account directly with a brand, mm-hmm. you're probably looking at a 10 to 20 percent margin. Okay. Now, if you're buying from a distributor, you're looking at like 50, 60 percent. So there's websites like, for example, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm lost. Say it again. So if you're if you have a wholesale account directly with the brand, yes, you're probably looking at a ten to twenty percent margin because they're going to be more stingy with their margins because you're right. buying directly from them. But if you're buying from a distributor or a liquidator, you have way higher margins. But the distributor gets it from the company, though, right? So a lot of these distributors, well, one, they're getting better prices than you because they actually have a really really good relationship with the brand, mm. and they're buying like instead of a hundred, they're buying like tens of thousands. So they're able to, you know, sell it Got cheaper. It. And um, these uh, liquidation companies, what they do is like, let's say for example, Walmart gets a thousand bounty paper towels in their store. At the end of the month, if they still have that thousand, like, or they still have like a hundred left of that thousand and their goal is to sell all of them, they'll sell those 100 to a liquidation company for a very, very cheap cost. Really? So they can make more shelf space. Less than they got them for though? Sometimes they'll take a loss, yeah. Or they'll just sell it for really cheap. And then these liquidation companies will turn around and sell it for a little bit more than what they bought them for to third party sellers like myself. Got and it. And then we can sell it on Amazon. And you know, everything on Amazon is more than what it really costs. Right. Like if something sure. is $10 at the store, it might be 15, 20 on Amazon because people are paying for convenience. No, I don't think so. It just depends what it's it is. Especially electro- electronics to be about the same price. Yeah, it just depends what you're buying. Your store that you made the first million with, what were you selling? So that store, I was selling hazmat suits from a company called Tyvek. So it's like a full on, like just. Gotcha. Suit. Okay. COVID time? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Give me the process. So that company, Tyvek, I directly opened up a wholesale account with them. They were just willing to accept people. Um, I think they may may have been struggling for, with sales or they were just open to accepting people. Mm-hmm. And then I was just buying their hazmat suits for $5. It was 5 to $7, depending on the size. And they were selling for 15 to $20, depending on the size on mm-hmm. Amazon. And then I was just ordering thousands of units using my credit lines. Mm-hmm. And then they were all in Amazon's warehouse as I was getting orders. Amazon was just shipping all of them out. How much do you need to start, you think? So it depends. There's two different ways to go about it. So there's FBA and then there's FBM. FBA is what we've been talking about, where Amazon's basically doing all the work for you. The only disadvantage with that is you do need at least, like, I would say $2,000 because these companies, they have what's called an MOQ, which stands for a minimum order quantity. If you open up a wholesale account with Fiji, they may be like, all right, to do business with us, you have to order 100 at a time. So, you know, if their products cost $10, you got to order a hundred. That means you got to spend a thousand off rip every time you order from gotcha. them. So it, it depends on who you're working with. But let's say if you have a, under a thousand dollars, you want to do FBM. FBM stands for fulfillment by merchant, meaning you're shipping it. Got it. But what this allows you to do is instead of having to go 
buy these MOQs, you can just walk into stores like Costco, Sam's Club, Marshalls, Ross, download the Amazon seller app on your phone. It comes with an in-app barcode scanner and you can literally scan products in these stores and the app will tell you what's profitable to sell on Amazon. Oh, wow. So my little brother, he's 15 years old. He makes $5,000 a month on Amazon right now. He just has a Costco membership. And then, yeah, that's it. He doesn't even have an LLC yet. He's about to get one. But he has a Costco membership and an Amazon seller account that's $40 a month. And um, every, I think two days a week, my mom takes him to Costco. He just goes in there, scans products. All he needs to do is find one. And then he just buys what he can afford and he flips it on Amazon. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. We're going to get to the bar because I want to know how you... How you built this Amazon, especially in one year. And what year was this that you you made your first million? Oh man, this is like 2010, 2011. Oh, so you've been on you. Oh, so you know the game. Oh, I'm, I'm about to get the next. The, I'm gonna get ten years of information. Out yeah, of this. Mind. Yeah, I've been okay, doing this. I know you teach your students, but I'm gonna try to extract yeah, all yeah. of that out of you. Okay, so um, what is an opportunity like that over with? Like, it seems like there's certain waves of opportunity, right, mm-hmm. to, to be an Amazon. Not everybody has an Amazon store. Not everybody has an Amazon store, but you see more people that are more aware of it. Is the opportunity over? So that's the most frequently asked question. Is the well is the well dry? Is the gold mine? Is selling on Amazon dead? Selling on Amazon is just another form of supply and demand, which was BC before Christ. Like, you would go and you would trade for things, right? Like it, it's been around forever. It's not going anywhere. And now we've become accustomed to the two-day delivery. We've been accustomed to shopping online and doing all this stuff. So it's, it's not going anywhere. It's the largest e-commerce platform in the world. More than half of the globe shops on Amazon. Two-thirds of American uh, um, uh, Americans have prime memberships. It's not going anywhere. And this Two is what thirds of Americans have prime memberships. And I want you, I want you to think about this number. There's over 200 million products on Amazon and more are being added every single day. There's only 2 million sellers globally. Think mm. about that. So that's 1%, 1% in reference to the amount of products. Like, it's inevitable for you to find a product. You just have to do the research, need to know what you're looking for, and go from there. Okay. Okay. So, what do you teach your students? So, I teach them. To have their own store or to have their own product or what? So, what I teach is a few different strategies with Amazon. You have arbitrage, wholesale, and private label. Arbitrage is going to a store, buying something below MSRP, reselling it for MSRP, keeping the difference. Wholesale is going to someone like Heinz Ketchup, getting a distributorship deal, which is below MSRP, selling it for MSRP in bulk. And then there's private label, what I do, which is my personal opinion, the best. And we basically do what Beats by Dre, what Apple, all these large companies do. We find products that have high demand, low competition. This mic, this cover, this stand, this cord, this chair, the lights, the stands, everything and anything in this room you can buy on Amazon. So the thing is, there's a lot of large brands, but there's also a lot of average people like me and you who have brands that are selling them. And that's what we do. Like, if you think about it, like majority of the listeners right now, I can tell you mathematically, statistically, half of the listeners have gotten something in the last week from Amazon. So if you look at the stuff that you're ordering, look at the name brands, it's not the Toshibas and the, and the Apples and the Beats by Dre. It's random stuff that you never heard of that you can't get in Walmart. Those are private label companies, and that's what I do. So I, so I can find the manufacturer that make this mic, and I can get the same stuff inside, and then have the social proof microphones. Absolutely. And teach people how to build their own podcast using the social proof microphone. Absolutely. 100%. Yep. You can go find like you can go find Apple's supplier, a- Apple's manufacturer. Certain specific large brands will have proprietary uh, goals with and proprietary things in motion with uh, manufacturers. But if you find the manufacturer, they can make something similar. They can make adjustments. You can have the same quality, different name. You can actually improve it because here's the thing. Large companies like so many people are like, I would never be able to compete with X company. They're huge. Well, if you go look at their listings on Amazon, they're not optimized. They don't have people specifically focusing on Amazon because they're so big. They're not improving and testing and doing product development because you've been buying the same thing for the last decade. Why are they going to put a bunch of time, effort, and energy into changing it? That's where the small people come in. We bottom feed. We go see the pros and the cons. What are the one-star reviews? That's the easiest way to improve a product. You look at the five-star reviews, you look at the one-star reviews of all the other products and the large name brands. 
Keep what's working, the five-star reviews. Look at the one-star reviews, and you'll start to see commonalities. Size difference, weight, durability, strength, whatever it may be. You take that right to the, uh, to the manufacturer and say, hey, listen, this is the commonality. I want to improve on this. What do you think? You don't got to be smart. You don't even got to have the idea. You tell them what you want. They have a team that does that. Now, that's how the product development phase starts. Now, when you launch a product, you're new and improved and better than the big name. Mm. So let's just get this out of the way. If, I, if I'm going to like be a part of your course, how much is it? So if you go to the amzformula.com, it's $9.97. Okay. All right. So I, I just want to get that out the way just so there's no anxiety, which is, is, is a steal. But for one, you're going to like, what is it? He said, first off, he said something because y'all know every episode he's watching and paying attention. He's like, yo, I know you're going to ask me for a discount for your <laughs> audience. So um, he said, what was it? Social Proof FBA? Yep. Social Proof FBA. Okay. Dot com. Okay. And, you know, we'll be able to find out how to do this stuff. Okay, cool. I just want to get that out the way for the people that's like, yo. But it's cheaper. Don't buy it for me. Y'all are going to save some money. If you go to socialprooffba.com, you guys are going to save $100. Why would you, if your website is nine ninety seven, dollars why would you make another way? I, I, I'm grateful for it. Yeah. But I'm always learning. I'm always learning from you. Um, why would you make it cheaper? I don't understand. So and why would you tell them it's cheaper? I don't understand. So for a few different reasons, like I want to give back. Like I respect what you're doing for the community, for the culture. I watch all the episodes. I learn from the episodes. So I want to give back to your audience, right? This program sells hundreds of units a month, right? At the 997. And at that, it's a steal, right? Because we have tons of students like Joseph O'Connell making $600,000, buying his first real estate property, retiring his uh, wife, quitting his job. But I want to do something special for you and for the community. I'm always about giving giving back, giving away, and trying to help any way I can. So for those, like that $100 you save, that can go towards product. That can go towards, you know, software to find find your product. That can go towards shipping. It can help. Wow. Okay. First off, how, okay, um, all right, I want to know what you teach in there so that I can get started, right? So, okay, I, I get the course. What am I going to find? Um, is this, first off, is this something that a new entrepreneur can do? Yeah, or absolutely. Kind of be in the game a little so bit. I'm, be, I'm good at entrepreneurship, I think. Yeah, yeah. I can build a brand. Yeah, and I absolutely. think it'd be good for me. Yeah, so like the beautiful thing about this business, Dave, is like, you don't have to be an experienced entrepreneur. You don't have to have 40 hours a week to devote to this. Like the reason why this, this business is so beautiful is because you can run it at your leisure. You can run it anytime. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, anytime, few hours a week. Like there's no pro, like no pros and cons to when or where or how you work on the business. Next, you're not building websites. You're not building funnels. You're not doing email automations. You're not putting Facebook pixels and running ads and all this other stuff that you need to do with traditional oh, e-commerce. thank you, Josh. You're not I, doing you know, none I, of that. I always think, and now in a, in, yeah. a, in a business now, that's what you have to do to be successful. And right. Quite honestly, that stuff gives me anxiety. Right. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I'm with you. I'm not tech savvy <laughs> at all. Oh my god. At all. Okay. So why don't I need all that stuff? Because Amazon has everything. So this is why Amazon's so great. I mean, literally, if you look at Amazon, it's pages. Like if you're to go build a brand and put it on Shopify, you have to have the store, you have to have the domain, you have to have all this stuff in place, Facebook, all this other stuff in play. With Amazon, it's just pages. So you have a picture, you have a title, you have a price, you have the bullet points, and then you have a description. That's it. You can literally create a listing for a new product in under 20 minutes, have it done, have it live. And here's the great part. People go to Amazon when they're ready to buy. You don't go to Amazon to kill time. You go to Google, you're asking like <laughs> crazy questions or whatever pops right, in your right. mind. You're trying to find crazy or YouTube, stuff out. You're just yeah, you're looking. just wasting time. You go to Amazon when it's time to buy, right? So they already have the traffic. So you don't have to go run Facebook ads and learn Google ads and all this other stuff. The traffic's already there. Mm, okay. So let's talk to some people who have an Amazon store. Okay. They've been in business for a while, but it's not working out. Okay. Do you know why it's not working out even without knowing who they are? So there's a, there's variables, right? So I'll, I'll just rapid fire through some variables. So if you have a product on Amazon, it's not selling well, 
there's tons of different variables, right? Just like if you're trying to lose weight and you're not losing weight, right? So number one, it could be the product is bad, right? Now, what is a bad product? A product could be too saturated or the competition could be too high for you, right? Number two, it could be a bad product because it's a product that is not selling every single day. Like one of the main things that we look for is a product that's going to sell 24-7, 365, not a product that is seasonal. So we use a free resource called Google Trends. Give me, give me an example of of both of those, one is seasonal and one is selling all day. So this cover for the mic, right? This this microphone cover is going to sell 24-7, 365, irregardless of male, female, Florida, Texas, Alaska, right? Now, an inflatable pool toy, that may sell Florida, Texas, California, or the other 52 states during, you know, April, right? right. Or Peak a holiday-driven right. Christmas, Christmas lights, pumpkin carving kits, stuff like that. So we're looking for products that are going to sell 24-7, 365. Use Google Trends. It's a free tool to see, and it'll show you when those products are selling. Another thing, it could be your listing's not optimized. Hold on, hold on. Go, go back, go back. Google Google listing. What, Google Trends. Say? Google Trends. What is that? Free do? resource. So if you go to Google Trends and you type in uh, Christmas lights, what it's going to do is it's going to show you a historical chart from when it first showed up on Google. Now, the reason why we're using Google, you're like, well, that's not Amazon. Google's the largest search engine. Amazon is the largest e-commerce search engine. So Google has the most relevant and oldest data. So we go on there, we type in pumpkin carving kit or Christmas lights, whatever our product is, we can see is it horizontal? So is it selling January to December sustainably? Because that's what we want. Or is it Janu- Is it um, November, December spiking up because it's a seasonal product and then flatlining, right? So we want nice, sustainable, cordial growth, right? People are going to buy this every day, 24-7, 365. That's what we want, something that's sustainable. Um, like another thing is you can go to Google Patents. Another reason why you might not be selling is Google, we, patent? Google Patents. Just go to Google and type in Google Patents. You can do a patent search without paying a lawyer to see if the product is patented. A lot of people have a product and they see it's a good product to sell on Amazon because there's not many sellers. There's not many sellers because somebody ha- owns intellectual property and you can't sell it. Mm-hmm. So these are mistakes that I made. Like I didn't know and I'm launching stuff, getting cease and desist. I'm launching, launching through trial and error. Really? So like seasonality is big. Um, making sure it's not patented is big, making sure your listing's optimized. When you go to amazon.com and you type in a product, you're going to see a few things, an image, a title, a review count, and a price. Those are the four things you want to optimize. Number one, you want to make sure your photo is the best, when you high say quality. What do you mean exactly? Just make it, make it, make it best as possible. Gotcha. Okay. So gotcha. you want your image to be optimized, right? Joe didn't know what optimized meant, so I was trying to clear it up for my man. Yeah, you want to just make it. If it's <laughs> blurry, you, see really, uh, you just just make it better. Okay, cool guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to make it simple. Like just right. make it better. If it's blurry, fix it. If it's out of focus, fix it. Um, next is the title. So many people just stuff keywords like microphone, good for podcasts, recording, small, condenser. That doesn't sound like you're just stuffing keywords in there because people want to rank, right? So what you want to do is you want to make it legible. Like you want to make it sound like a sentence. You want to make it seem um, attractable. And you also want to have the keywords in there. Next, um, in reference to reviews and pricing, so many people want to start selling the product and they wonder why it doesn't take off. They don't have any reviews. So reviews is what? Social proof, right? Nobody wants to be first. No one wants to be last. How many times have you been in a new area and you look at restaurants to eat because you don't know the area and you see bad reviews or no reviews? It could be slapping, but you don't go there based off of the reviews only. You don't even look at the menu. So you want to make sure you have at least five reviews, all five stars. And then last but not least is the price. One of the biggest things right off the bat people mess up is ending in 99 Don't ask me why I didn't invent it. I don't know the psychology behind it, but you never want to end your price point at 99. Do 97, 47, 40, 48, 92, anything other than 99, right? So that's a price hack right there. Um, Also compare your prices to competitors. You don't want to be the highest. You don't want to be the lowest. I like to be somewhere in the middle. So that's a few different areas without actually looking at the listing, looking at the product as to why it's not selling. Yeah, yeah, okay. There's there's a couple of things you check. Okay. All right. So... um, Seizing this opportunity in Amazon, which it seems like Amazon's only getting bigger and stronger, so the Absolutely. opportunity is going to be there. Um, what would be one of the first steps you... Is it finding the product? Is it That's everything. The most important part of the entire business is the product. Everything else is simple, easy, all downhill from there. Do you find a bunch of products? Like, So you have, a, you have a store with a bunch of products, or are you going to just get one product and trying to sell that? So there's two different models. There is the generic model and then there's the branded model. So generic model would be like, 
a Sam's Club approach that has a bunch of different products, bunch of different private label products, not really uh, semantically relevant. The branded approach would be like Apple. You start with one product, which is, you know, the computer. Then you bring out the phone, then you bring out the Airbus, and you bring out the tablet. So what I personally do, and both of them work, there's no rhyme or reason, right or wrong. What I personally do is the brand, because I found that the equity in selling it, the, the, uh, what you can sell the business for is going to be a little bit higher with the brand. It's easier to also grow because you're not just looking out for different products. Once you get the one product, the one brand, the one niche, that supplier has a catalog. You tell them what you're looking for. They send you the products in the catalog. You test them. Now you can go horizontal. So the first product is is always like, you know, getting over that milestone. Once you get the first product and you go that approach, the hard work's done, right? So you use those use those uh, to find the products, launch the product, go from there, contact the supplier, say, hey, let me see your catalog. Start going through the through the products, doing your due diligence, see which one works build out horizontally. But with one product, like simple math, because some people are like, well, how much can you make off a product? How does that work? This is basic generic, like low end, very reasonable. One product selling 10 units a day at $10 profit, right? Is one $100. One selling 10 units a day at $10 profit, yep. That's $100 per day. That's $2,800 to $3,000 a month. You're making twenty eight dollars to $30,000 a year off of one product. For a lot of people, that would cover their mortgage and their car note. Sure. That covered their, their mortgage. Like that's that would allow them to quit their job. Two products, you doubled your income. Three, you tripled. Four, you quadrupled. Right, and that's what we do. We just launched that one product. That's why we say you're one product away. Mm, I love it. And uh, one more on that is, how do you find the right? Because it, I, I've been in searches where I'm saying, okay, I want to do my own custom microphone, right? And, or I want to do, um, I don't know, camera covers. Like I always interested in like the, like green or yellow camera covers, little mm-hmm. silicone things. It's such a headache trying to find them. Do you have like some secret sauce? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because I've been told Brandon this and he's been sleeping. I actually have a phone notification that comes on. It literally says, remind Brandon to do this because he never <laughs> wants to do it. So funny. I'm going to show you and it's just been going off for six months. So <laughs> this is where you go to find, there's tons of places you can find suppliers starting with Google, but like the Mecca of where all the suppliers are and you can search geographically. So China's the biggest but you have Pakistan for textiles. You have India. You have different countries. China's always going to be the biggest. And before you guys say, like, the quality sucks, that's absolutely false. Like, all the big, high-quality products like Apple that are crushing it because of quality are made in China, right? Mm-hmm. Right? So we'll squash that right out the way. But you want to go to Alibaba.com. Alibaba.com, you're going to go in there and you're going to type in the name of the product. Boom, it's going to show you a directory of all of the, the suppliers. Now, this is what you want to do. Yes, because I've been on there. And this then, is what you want to do. That's the problem. There's all of them. Oh, my God. There's 2,000 of them. What yes. do I do? Who's the best? How do I do? So I'm going to break that down. A few things you want to look for. Number one, you want to look for a manufacturer and not a trading company. It'll say trading code next to their name. I didn't know what that meant till right now. So trading company is a middleman. You hit me up. You say you want this product. I say, I got you. I go call the manufacturer. I put some tax on it and sell it to you. That's what a trading company is. I had no idea because I always saw that. Trading Co. Okay, gotcha. Now, trading companies aren't always bad. On smaller orders, you may have to go, but manufacturer is preferred. Next, you want to make sure you're doing your due diligence. Check the reviews on Alibaba. Check how long they've been in business, their employees. Make sure they got a real facility. All this is publicly accessible underneath their actual listing. Number three, this is big, communication. There's a time barrier. There's a language barrier. So when you're communicating with them, you want to make see like who's getting back to you fast, who's following simple instructions. That's huge. And the biggest tip I can give you, everybody wants to negotiate. Everybody wants a deal. And it makes sense that if I negotiate a lower price and I sell at a higher price, I'll make more money. That's a mistake that I made as a beginner because amateurs monetize the front end, experts monetize the back end. Mm. I was beating my supplier up thinking the cheaper I got it, the more I would make. But what's happening, you get what you pay for. Yeah. So one day my supplier broke it down and they're like, listen, I want, to, I want to help you get this price, but understand that the price difference in the negotiations is not coming from our profit. So when she said that, like I had an epiphany. What, it's do not coming. what do you mean? The price difference that I'm negotiating is not coming from her profit, not coming from the company's margin. Mm. So if it's not coming from the company's margin, because they literally operate on pennies, that's why they make money on volume. They don't make a lot of money. So where's it coming from? It's coming from my product. The quality. At the time, my first one of my first products was a dual port USB car charger. It had the 5.1, 2.4. Remember that? 
And I was getting slaughtered with reviews. They weren't working. They were catching on fire. They were everything because I was beating them to death on the pricing mm. and they were putting bull crap in my product. So now I tell people it's a very simple acronym. It's um, WWAD. I'm an Apple fan. I own Apple stock. I own Apple products. I believe in Apple. WWAD stands for what would Apple do? Very simple. <laughs> Why do people love it? Hey, success leaves clues. They're a for billion sure. dollar company, a trillion dollar company. Excuse me. Don't, I don't want to do them like that. <laughs> Why are they so great? Their customer service is impeccable, right? The product packaging is simple and amazing, high quality. The products are high quality. Everything about them is good. So you think that they're like, if you look at an Android and you look at an iPhone, it's a four or five X price difference. You go get an Android for 200 bucks. This phone's $1,500. That's seven X price difference. Am I trying to negotiate with them? No, I'm paying it. Every year they come out with the same thing. I'm paying it. Why? Because of the quality. So I'd rather spend more on the product and have better quality than the competition and sell it for more, the Apple approach, than to beat the supplier up and put mediocre prob- uh, product that's obsolete and bull crap, just like what everybody else is doing. So I throw it like new and improved, the best, uh, only with, like these are all words and descriptive language that I'm utilizing to crush my competition. And I could tell them like, experience the difference. That's one of my like lines that I use in my description. Like experience that. the difference, the one and only new and improved blank. And they're like, oh, hang on, hold on. I haven't heard that technology. I haven't heard that product. I haven't heard of um, that system. And they start doing the research because people do do research when they're making a, a purchase, especially if it's over $47. So that's the way that we crush it. I make more money on the back end and the customer retention is longer because of the quality. So that's huge. Like in retail and in Amazon, it's all about customer attrition and LTV, which is lifetime customer value. Like so many people play the one night stand game and that's why their business doesn't grow sustainably. I want to marry my customers. So how do I get them to come back every single month? How do I get them to continue purchasing my product? How do I get them to go to the mountaintops and yell, my product is amazing? We all use Apple and we're like, man, this Apple's phone, this is fire, this is fire. We're using it. We're selling it for them for free. Why? Because they put all the time, energy, and effort into making this the best product. So that's what I do. And I may lose more on the front end, but I make more on the back end. And that's what separates the amateurs and the, and the experts. Dang, my man said, yo, when you negotiate, he's, he's like, yo, straight up, the, you, the, this price difference is not coming out of it's my It's big. Profit. It's big. People drop the ball on that wow. all the time, especially on electronics. I'm asking them if I don't believe in electronics for beginners because there's a lot of variables that cost more. But I have a friend that owns Anchor. They do $150 million a year. And what he says is like... Your friend owns Anchor? Yeah, Anchor. You probably have it. podcast? No, A-N-K-E-R. It's electronic. They have chargers, cables, all types of stuff. Gotcha. They're one of the largest like... Oh, you have one. Oh, that's it right there. Oh, that's Yeah, yeah, Anchor. So my friend owns that. And what he was saying is he actually flies out to China and he asked the people that are working on the product, like, what can we do to make this better? What's the newest technology out there? How can it charge faster? How can it last longer? How can it be more durable? Which is the Apple Play. Because that's what Apple's doing. Apple can charge more than all these other companies because the development, um, all the time, the resources, you can see a, a, a noticeable difference. So that's what I'm constantly doing is like, how can we make it better? I'm asking them. What is everybody that's ordering these products that are selling on Amazon doing that we could do better and I could pay you more so we can sell more and we can both make more? Gotcha. Right? And that's my big play. And it crushes because everybody's focused on the, well, can I get it 20 cents cheaper, 30 cents cheaper? I want to pay them more, make it better so I can make more on the back end because now they're going to keep buying it. They're going to tell everybody else and it's going to grow. That's a di- that's that, that's definitely a difference in philosophy. Like, like and, and the reason I'm... It's hitting me so hard because I'm the negotiator. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm going to negotiate, try to get a lower price, yeah. and not realizing, yo, I, a lower price doesn't always mean you're going to make more And money. you can still negotiate, but I mean, so many people, when they're ordering large volume, and I did this, like, it was like a game to me. Like, yeah, I beat them. I got, you know, I beat them. I got them down. <laughs> they said that was the lowest. I got them. I got them more. I got them to go lower. I'm like, right. Yes. And they might be on the other end like, yes, they took the trash. Yeah. <laughs> the profits might be more. They took the stuff that the big guy said he didn't want it or it didn't pass quality control and they pushed it off to you. Hey, bars, bars. Okay. All right. Oh, and there's my last question about that. And Joe, if you could just make sure like all the joints is, you know what I mean? I got I to make sure this is right. Okay. So let's say I'm getting my own custom whiteboard, right? I'm going to sell like the custom whiteboards. Um, 
if I order a hundred of them, two hundred, a thousand, or whatever, am I? Where do I keep this stuff? Am I? Am Got I? Is that the crib? God, I, I passed over that. So FBA, Amazon FBA will take it a step forward to go a step, uh, take it a step back to go a step forward. FBA stands for fulfillment by Amazon. On top of being able to operate this business at any, like generate this business, run this business, operate this business during your spare time at your leisure anywhere in the world, you're not holding on to physical inventory. You don't have employees. You don't have packaging supplies. You don't have printers. You literally, all you need is a computer to run this business. So the way it works, this is the way the whole business works. You find that product, right? Let's just say this mic, uh, this mic thing is, is the product. We find the product. We find the supplier on Alibaba. Right? We do the product development, which is simple. What can we do to improve? How can we make it better? What are we going to do? So on and so forth. Then we send it to Amazon. Now, the supplier, Amazon's going to give you a shipping address to a logistics center. It's called a, uh, it's called a uh, fulfillment center. Now, the supplier is going to send it directly to Amazon. You're not touching anything. All you're doing is sending an email. Mm. Right. Once Amazon receives it in their fulfillment center, they're going to disperse it to other fulfillment centers across the United States or globally if you're selling internationally. And that's how anywhere in the world they can get their product in two days. Now, what's cool is they're going to store your product for you. They are going to pick, pack, ship and handle customer returns for you for a small fee. So after you source the product, you pay for shipping, you pay for the fulfillment fee or the FBA fee you're still making 30 to 50%. 30% is the bare minimum I will make on a product. So if I sell it for 20, mm. we want six. So if you can get 33%, which is on the low side, every three products you sell, you double your money. And this is 24, seven, 365. Wow. What were your first year sales? What did you do the first year? My first year, I did $183,000 in sales. Incredible. My second year, I did $2.5 million in sales. What happened? between year one and year two? I'm hustling. I'm still I'm getting the word out, did untraditional marketing. I'm out here in these streets, I'm at malls. I'm setting up in the malls. You gonna send me back at the mall again. Mm. I'm setting up at the, you know, whatever it takes. I'm still at home. My first four years, I was at home. The next year I did 6.5 million in sales, still at home. The next year, I wanna say we did 2.5 million. Still this at home. Pre PPP too. <laughs> this before the, the 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 country is flooded. The world's flooded with money. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And this was at home. Then I said, okay, let me expand. Oh no, I'm sorry. First year, one hundred eighty-three thousand. Uh huh. One hundred eighty-three. Second year, two point five. Two point five. Third year, six point five. Six point five. And then that is two, then twelve point five. Six point five and twelve point five. Goodness gracious. And then I went into retail. So those last two years mm -hmm. was the bulk of it. Yeah, that was a nice, you know, that was a nice chunk of change at home. But you was building that momentum for four years. Though. Oh, for sure. For sure. So then when I got to retail, now I have an audience. Mm -hmm. I have people I can say, go get the product. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which made me more valuable to retailers. What retails were you in? Ooh, I was in Walmart, Target, CVS, Rite Aid, uh, Walgreens, uh, Kroger's. Um, you name it. If it's a product can be sold there, I was there. Okay, let's let's talk about the the building of the main choice. Okay. What was the what were you doing before this? I was a nurse. You were a nurse? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. My background is science. My husband's a physician. So yeah, nursing. So you're nursing, like mm -hmm. in a hospital? Yeah, you know, I, I think I, I, I did the clinical for like a year. I've mm -hmm. always done like advanced, untraditional nursing. Yeah. Like I wanted them positions that people just didn't get. Like I did. So for instance, I work for an insurance company. Mm -hmm. So say for instance, if there was a medication that went bad and there was a class action, I would go through all the documentation to see who actually fit this lawsuit and who didn't. Mm. That was one thing. Another job that I had, I would go into the hospitals to review the physician documentation. Mm -hmm. So let's just say hypothetical, you got congestive heart failure, left side or right side. Let's say the insurance company paid more for left side, but the doctor just write heart failure. Mm. I would ask the doctor, could this be left sided? And if it could, can you write in the chart possibly left sided? Mm. And you would be, I could bill like 20, 30, $40,000 more just because writing the word left. Oh wow! But I had to be... Uh, sharp enough to be able to ask the doctor 
could yeah. this be? So I have to look at the symptoms and make sure like this is left sided heart failure. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Just different things like that in nursing. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're a nurse. Where do you get the idea for the main choice? The idea came from, I've always been in the wanting to do more. Mm -hmm. Like prior to even, you know, going to nursing school, I've been on my own since I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. I've been out the house since I was 15, on my own since I was 15. And, you know, I have the luxury of working with the company. Uh, when I was in high school, 15 years old, working with them, these were like, multi-millionaire black owned uh car dealership mm -hmm. so at a young age i seen that and i was like wow like these people are getting it like they look like me and they're getting it yeah. and i know for sure that shaped me to the possibility of what's out there even being from detroit on my own at 15 trying to graduate from high school you know i seen that they took something from nothing and made it into what they had. Yeah. And for me, for some people that will cause, you know, envious, that will cause jealousy. I've never, ever been jealous of anyone that was getting it. Mm. Always motivated. Mm. So that gave me fuel. Like, so I've always had a entrepreneurial spirit inside. And even as a kid, I remember I had a dream so vividly that I was this big time businesswoman. <laughs> big time, right? And it, when I went to nursing school, I was like, well, dang, that dream was so vivid. I was like, maybe it was just a dream, yeah. you know? And when I, you know, became an entrepreneur working, I'm like, no, it wasn't a dream, yeah. you know? So I've always been inside of me flipping it. Like I sold earrings at one point. I sold t-shirts on Instagram. Like mm. I will always do something, even with my nine to five job. Yeah. That, that just wasn't satisfying me. Matter of fact, I could not work a job over 12 months. As good as I was, I can bring in money, any role. Everybody wanted me. After 12 months, I would come in, fix a problem. I was like, I'm out. You got commitment issues? I don't have commitment issues. I have stagnation issues. Mm. I've come into this problem. Every job I had as a nurse was a problem. And I fixed it. Now what? Now what? I need another problem. That's why you've been retired for the last couple of years. <laughs> and now you're and back, back in the again. <laughs> <laughs> Even chilling, stagnation. Exactly. I'm, I'm done being stagnant hey, stagnation. Listen, I swear that first 12 weeks, the first two weeks of the acquisition, I was just like, This is different, you know. <laughs> wow. Let me do so. So, so give me, give me idea. And, and what, it, what was the main choice? It's hair care products. Yeah, it started out as a personal hobby. So, long story short, put a bad color in my hair. Um, had a relaxer at the time. Put like a brown in there, and my hair just became brittle. Mm -hmm. My mom put a relaxer in my hair when I was ten. So I never seen the true texture of my hair as an adult. Oh, wow. I was ten. So when I laid off the relaxers to nourish my hair and back I'm sorry, to health. sorry, from 10 to adult, always 10, relaxers? Always, always. I would mm. slap that thing in there. If I seen a little inch of new growth, I'm slapping a relaxer on there. Really? Always with my hair bone straight. So I was known for the girl with the bone straight hair, mm -hmm. you know. So always chemically treated. But going through my little, what I consider was, you know, it, it, was, a, it was chaotic, but it, it led me to where I am today. Just let off the relaxers. You know, I was like, okay, let me start. Then I started seeing my natural hair grow in. And I'm like, wait a minute, this this hair look different than what mm -hmm. I've been seeing since I was 10. Yeah. It looks stronger, you know, and that is kind of what led me to now, how do I manage all of this hair? Because I got a hair full to come all the way to my waist now. Oh, wow. So I'm like, what do I use to manage it? And I just didn't see anything on the market that really catered to, to our hair, natural hair. And this was before the whole natural hair movement. Yeah. Like I was one of the pioneers that like, no, like, let's embrace our natural hair. Yeah. And I started out on YouTube just talking about to people, how do you, you know, tame your hair? What are those things that you can do? So I was like a resource just getting up two or three o'clock in the morning. So telling people questions. what to do with their hair what from to other do products as and if, stuff. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. As if it was like my job. Yeah. But I like, I got up in the morning, every morning to do that. Yeah. So you have this idea to create a product. So people will start to write in, Courtney, what do I do for this? What do I do for my split ends? What I, so I'm like a mad scientist at this point. I'm mixing mm -hmm. concoctions, and I wind up doing a video. It was called the Ultimate Deep Conditioner Video. Mm -hmm. That video went viral. Really? I would tell people how to mix it, how to do it. And I would have so many people that wrote in to me that said, Courtney, I'm not trying to tell you how to run your life, but I don't want to mix products. Can you send it? Can you mix it and send it? What was in this concoction? 
What would well, you mix? I told you, I had to. Choose. But you told no, them. No, no, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, so what I did, which I'm glad I started that way because it was a personal thing. Yeah. And when I say it was personal, I didn't have, I didn't let expense get in the way of what I would, the quality of what I was doing. Yeah. So high quality vitamins, nutrients. So, um, just say like green tea, um, like green tea oil, just a lot of oils, things like that. You can research uh, cold pressed carrot seed oil. And probably in a bottle like this, is maybe like $1,000. So what? I was using all of that. But I didn't care because it was my hair. Like, I didn't Cold have an idea. Oil. Exactly. Cold seed. Carrot. Yes. Carrot Carrot seed and oil. And it's for your hair. And it's very expensive. It's for the body, too. Very expensive. But at the time, I didn't care what it was. My hair needed to be treated. Yeah. So taking that motto, and when I told people to use it, it was like a sure hit. Like, I didn't care who used it. Like it was a hit. Yeah. And then people like Courtney, you need to take that video down. Like this is my followers telling me. So my followers started growing on YouTube. Oh, wow. They're like, I'm not trying to tell you how to run your life, but please take that video down and sell this product. But you, so the product, you, you didn't get the product from somewhere. You made the product. I made it. So the, oh, so the, the cold carrot press thing. That, yes. You yes. made that. I made that. And you're on YouTube putting it together. Yes. Yes. And mixing it. Mixing it. And saying, put this in your hair. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes, yes. Because I was just passionate about, you know, being a resource. Yeah. I've always been a resource since all my life. Always been a resource. How did you find that to mix all this stuff? Together? That's when my science background comes into place. God, yeah. So I'm like a, I'm when I say like a mad scientist, bottles on top of buckets, on top of you name it. I had it. It's incredible mixing it yeah so you you make it mm -hmm. and how long was the video up before you decided okay let me take this i down. probably kept the video up for like a maybe like a year maybe like a year but the thing about it is as we know you know you could tell people how to get things all day sure. long people don't care yeah you know what i'm saying like they don't and then at the same time you have some people had a lot of professional and like listen it's just not my space. Like, I, I really want the product, but yeah. I don't have time to mix it. Yeah, I ain't about to be mixing yeah, it. Yeah, so if you could send it to me, like, yeah. that'll work, you know. And I'm like, no, nah, that's not really what I do. I had just graduated my bachelor's. I had just enrolled into the nurse practitioner program. How old I, were you at this point? At this point, shoot, I was maybe like 27, 26, somewhere in that area. 26 years yeah. old, 27. Yeah. Okay, you're whipping this stuff up. So when do you decide, okay, I, I can't just be giving the game out. Let me. So it was it. until somebody had uh, a cousin of mine called me and she said, Courtney, I'm all the way in Texas and like people know you here. Like mm. they know you, they trust you, they talking about you. She was like, why don't you think about selling that? And I'm like, girl, I'm about to go to school. I just got my books. You know, I'm not about to mm. do this. And we talked for like two hours. And she's like, no, this throw something in the bottle. You got nice hair. I said, what I can't do is just throw nothing in the bottle. Yeah. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to have to do it right. Mm -hmm. And after some convincing and some convincing, I was just like, all right, I'm going to do it. Like, So when you hear me say I took $500, turned it to over $100 million, that's exactly what it was because I didn't have a business model. So I just launched it. Like, I just like, okay, I didn't have a website. I was like, I went on YouTube, uh, not YouTube. I think I went on Instagram at the time. This is the beginning of Instagram. Mm. And I was like, well, this product y'all been talking about, if you want it, Hit me up. I send you an invoice to PayPal. I didn't have a website. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, send me the invoice. Cover it. I send you the invoice. Pay it. Then I send you out. A, you know, send you out the product. How much was this? How much was the product? The product was seventeen ninety nine. And back then, that was even a lot for a deep conditioner. But we talking mm. about what did I just tell you? How much this one bottle was? Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. So I'm like, and this is the thing about you know people like, you can't just call yourself just luxury. You know what I'm saying? Like, or premium, like it was objective. It wasn't just subjective. I didn't just yeah. say we're premium. No, I put a thousand dollar oil. This is one of the oils in this, in this product. Mm -hmm. So I was confident about my 1799. Man. And I'm like, and whoever got a problem with it, just got a problem with it. But at this point I showed my results on social media before I started the uh, product. Yeah. So my hair started here and they seen the journey. And that's what kind of, that's what made me grow. My hair was here. By the time I started selling the products, my hair was here. Oh, wow. So they was like, well, shoot, what is that you use? And like, whatever it is, send it to me, you know, and so, then growing it down to here, you know, it's a wrap there. 
Eighteen dollars. What was your product cost? Product cost. See, I was making it at home. So when you make this stuff at home, so that's the thing. Even when I took the products to retail, mm -hmm. of course, that's where your volume is and you scale. Yeah. But you got to spend them years at home. I could pocket all that profit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's like night and day. Like, you know, I was, again, I mean, we at a, I could probably make it for, I could make it for three or $4. You know what I mean? And then $18, all profit. Exactly. Then I didn't have a team. I didn't have the overhead. Yeah. I didn't have a facility. I didn't have any of that. So as you scale, so I tell people, stay at home as long as you can. As long <laughs> right, as you right, can, right. you know. And, then, you know, like I said, once you start to scale and grow, that's a different, uh, different thing. But you're talking about liquid money, that yeah. thing was just flowing. Yeah. You know, you get to retail, it's like, uh-oh, let me, let me halt. <laughs> I got sure. some responsibilities, you know. For sure. But, like, now all at home, like, I can just, I can do what I want to do. I can scale yeah. this thing. I can do this, that, so. So you, so you like really went all in terms of like all of your money. I'm putting it into this brand. So and so, all right. So like another thing happened in 2015 too, right? From 2012 when I started my brand to 2015, I was making money but not seeing it. I was like right. literally selling out. I was making clothes and I was selling out, but I wasn't seeing the money. And it was because I didn't have financial literacy. So I, right before me and my ex broke up, we went to visit my dad in prison. So it was like a big back-to-back -back thing. So it was like April 20th, we wanted to go visit my dad in prison. April 20th, 20, 2015. I'm telling my dad, like my dad, like, oh, everybody's talking about Milano in jail and yada, yada, yada. So I was like, yeah, I'm making money, but I'm not seeing it. He's like, okay, ex explain to me your process. I'm like, every time I buy shirts, they sell out. He said, well, when they sell out, how long does it take you to get new inventory? I said it take about three weeks. He said, okay, that's in those three weeks where you don't have any inventory coming in, you're just spending that money. So mm -hmm. you're, you're running in a circle. It's like a rat mm -hmm. race, he said. And I'm like, damn. So I don't got no money coming in, and I'm just spending the money. He's like, so you, you're going to just keep going in a circle. He said, the goal would be to never sell out. And that was the aha moment for me. Like, I literally never looked at it as simple as that. But he's from the streets. He said, whenever he would sell out a product, you know where... My customers will go to the next person. Yeah. So you don't want your customers going to the next person. Keep product. Never sell out. Never sell and out. my mindset was never sell out. So once me and my ex, we broke up, he was he thought that I was going to have to come back to him because he was so used to that cycle. And because of my dad gave me that game, oh. and my mom gave me, oh, that's, all right, sorry. My dad gave me that game. So my whole mindset was like never sell out, right? First of all, what was you about to say about your mom? My mom gave good. me a check. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I didn't, it's so many different stories. We're here. So look. We're here now. I, I have been no rush. I got nothing to do today. So, and I, th I, I can't remember the month. It was probably like a month or a few months after. But it's in 2015 as well. So I'm telling my mom, like, all right, mom, I'm going to go into sweatsuits. Um, and like I said, I just spent a lot of my money on a fashion show. So mm -hmm. I couldn't spend a bulk of money on sweatsuits. Um, so I'm like, mom, I, if I get... It was like twelve hundred dollars. I was like, "Mom, I need a twelve hundred dollar check." I think I went like twelve hundred and sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. I was like, "I just need to get these sweatsuits. If I can get these sweatsuits, I promise I'm never going to ask you for no money again." <laughs> and she was like, "I don't have it." So I remember sitting on the steps in her living room, and she walked downstairs and she dropped the check in my lap, and I was so happy. I gave her a hug. And I was like, "I promise I'm gonna pay you back." And, like, till this day, I know on Invest that stage, I said, to this day, I paid her back times 300. I know I paid her back times more than that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it was just, like, her believing in me meant a lot. So with them sweatsuits, too, they helped me. Because now them sweatsuits, I think I charged 150 for the sweatsuits. Mm. They, I think they charge, they cost, like, $59 to make, and I charged, nice. like, 150 for the sweatsuit. Nice. So now they helped me get more money. Yeah. So now it was, like, never sell out. This just helped me get more money. And it was, like, all right, now I'm just growing. I remember him seeing me on a uh, on an airplane. I was I think I was going to LA or Atlanta, and he text was like, "Who you messing with now?" I'm like, "Nobody. I'm single." He was like, "Nah, you got to be dating somebody because like you." I'm like, "Wow." So and I didn't even want to prove it, but in my heart, it felt so good yeah. because like like I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do that is making you think that I'm dating someone else. And all I'm doing is spending my own money. I'm Amazing. working hard. It was just a feeling that no one can take from me. Amazing. Yo, people, like, this is kind of the stuff that people don't get a chance to see, man. Or or here, like, you have a real journey. Like, you was broke, right? And I, I don't even think your, your dad would uh, even give you that advice. 
if you weren't working to be experiencing something and noticing. Some people never just say, yo, I feel like I'm making sales, but I ain't making no money. Right. Nobody, they don't see it because they're not actually grinding. Your mom probably didn't believe, wouldn't have believed in you if you didn't believe in yourself. Right. And then you just go hard after that. So talk to me about the promotion, like the marketing. What were you doing to sell all these clothes? So to be honest, I was going hard even before then. Yeah. I just wasn't smart with the money. You know, I was working. I remember my ex before this guy. He was like, why are you up? That's when I was blogging. He like, I used to be blogging for free. You know, he like, like, shut your computer. Like, why you got, like, why we can't spend time right now? I'm like, I'm just trying to work. He's like, 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 I pay your stuff. Like, it's all right. Like, and then I was doing photo shoots too. Mm. And I was charging $50, 50 to do people photo shoots. He was so mad. You were charging $50. What do you mean? <laughs> to take people pictures. Oh, you were a photographer. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> everything Yo, I, was, <laughs> I got a whole nother respect for you like you are a hustler for real and it wasn't because i needed the money <laughs> because i had people that right. always looked out so <laughs> I, he was like you want to go and take pictures for 50 dollars he was so mad <laughs> he, was, he was so mad at me i'm like yes like yeah. it's because i it's something i want to do like i enjoy doing it and they book me he was like i can give you 50 dollars for that i give you more than that i give you more than that i'm like no it's okay <laughs> rest in peace Sully. he passed away oh my um, goodness but yeah so i was always a hard worker though yeah. like i was working so hard like even when i wasn't seeing money I was working really hard. Like my 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 work ethic continues to match. Like you know, and I remember like when I used to be posting on Instagram. First every day I would just go out sell and sell, and then it was like, all right, I'm on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm not going out to sell yeah. because on Tuesdays and Thursdays I need to build the brand. And mm-hmm. I remember somebody texting like, you don't want this money, and I'm like, it's bigger than money. Like the brand to me is bigger than money. I just knew where it can go. Yeah, I didn't know it can go this far. But I just knew what I saw it going, and I'm like, I gotta build the brand. I can't if I go out every day and sell, I, I can't make no money. But then eventually, I started to hire some some sales people that would just make the deliveries for oh, me. Oh, so when you say you would go out and sell, like on at the point where you were selling, or you just run around in your, with your car, going yeah. to barbershops and salons? No, or so I would like? post on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I would be like, Hey, I got. I would take a picture of what I had that day, mm-hmm. and then I would say the sizes, and then I'm like, Text what you want. And then, like, whoever texts me there, I would just try to meet at a safe space. So I would meet at a bar, uh, gas station, mm. or I would meet, like, in front of a grocery store. Uh, I would just meet different places. So I would be, like, running errands all over the city, dropping off stuff. So promoting on social media, saying, yo, I will come bring you this sweatsuit. hmm And you would just drop it off. Drop it off, yeah. And I'm so grateful to God because God be just watching me, for sure. Because women got robbed. Mm. Like women got set up and robbed. I imagine. Yeah, I wasn't, and I'm so happy that I had like tunnel vision that I wasn't thinking about like what can the worst that yeah. can happen. Because if I thought about it, then it would have stopped me from doing it. Explain that. Explain that. Explain that. Because I I don't, I don't want people to miss that point. I think when you start to like, when you start to think about all of the bad stuff, it starts to have self doubt creep in. And I'm not a person like, okay, what if this can happen, bro? I'm just like, all right, God, just guide me. Mm-hmm. And whatever happened is going to happen. I'm either going to learn from it or I'm going to win. And that's how I look at it. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. I was, um, I had a conversation with a guy that was like, he was in an MBA program, like um, like business school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they teach them all about like business and all the things you should do and shouldn't do and all that kind of stuff. And the guy was telling me, he was like, yo, you're probably going to be more successful than everybody in my class. It's like when I was selling t-shirts too. I said, why? He said, because you don't even see the errors that you're making. you just out here working. Right, wow. Because people be too afraid because you know you probably shouldn't do that. Right. Like the people are like, yo, you shouldn't sell a shirt without trademarking, right? Right. Did you trademark initially? It was a process. She was out here selling in the streets. But some people would never sell because right. it's not trademarked. Because some people want to have it all figured out. Yeah. Like, bro, like the beauty is in the journey. Like, you don't got to see the whole staircase. Just go up the step. Like, God is going to just do the steps, you know? <laughs> then the staircase is going to come. I didn't have the vision. Like, at first, I remember, like, they like, you need a business plan. I'm like, all right. I Googled a business plan template. I started feeling that. I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. So right. let me just go. <laughs> I ain't feeling this template out because this going to stop me. Like, me right. trying to have it all figured out is going to stop me from going. Yeah. And I'm an executor. I'm not really a planner. 
I'm mm-hmm. learning to be better at planning, mm-hmm. but I'm an executor. I'm just going to go. Yeah. Where was um, where was your main promotion coming from? Was it Instagram? Instagram, <laughs> for sure. How often were you posting or how often were you promoting? All day. People was like, is somebody <laughs> running your page? <laughs> Somebody running your page? I'm like, no, it's me. Because <laughs> I would literally be like right in front of somebody's face. And then they'll look. I'm like, you just posted it? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yes, I love Instagram. It, would, it didn't feel like work. It was just like, if I seen a customer wearing it, I was reposting a customer. Like, slide it in my line. So my timeline was filled up every day. Mm. I was on people's timeline every day, all day. Uh, people are afraid to do that, man, because it messes up the aesthetic of the page. I don't care about the aesthetic. I care about me growing. <laughs> like, who cares about the aesthetic? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, I mean, now I'm a little bit like, all right, I just want my page to look cute. But as I be posting stuff, I'm like, this is not going to match. This ain't going to make sense. But <laughs> when you go to my page, it represents me. I'm all over the place, just yeah. like my page. Now, the business page, we got a strategist. Yeah. My page is like, I'm posting what I feel. Yeah. Now I'm older. I got a kid, so I can't be like on there as much. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, dang, I just wish I had that feel for it like I did before. But Yeah. 2015, 2016, you got a store, a mm-hmm. million dollars. Where did it really start that? When did it really start happening? Because a million dollars in 2016, and then like, it's it's looking like an average of 10 million a year no, since it wasn't. then. Wasn't the average of ten million a year since then? It was a slow climb. Tell us about this climb. I don't want to say every dollar, every month, every no, year, no, no, not every dollar. Yeah. But I'm saying like, what happened? Like, what happened to where it? You had some sort of explosion. Was it like what? What? what like. Walk me through so how I would, that happened. So, like, even, like, when I first started, I would, like, always, like, DM celebrities. Yeah. And, like, hey, um, Milano Drew is my brand. I would love to send you a package to pay homage. Mm. And some people will open the message and just read it. Some people will respond and say, like, hey, and give me their address. Some people just ignored it, but I will always send it. So we were able to – I was able to send, like, different celebrities and influencers my stuff. And at the time, it wasn't really influencers. So yeah. we didn't have to pay – I didn't have to pay to do that. So when they was wearing it and I would see a photo, I would just be like, screenshot and repost and be so happy. Yeah. And I will always share my customers. So like the celebrities definitely help because people mm. love what celebrities wear, yeah. but representation matters. So when people see their, their own stuff in there, like and they see people that look just like them and they see different body types wearing it, then they know, okay, it's not just for celebrities. Because sometimes when you just see a celebrity in something, you don't even go look at the price you think is expensive. Yeah. I had people say that That's they thought fact. it was too much money because they seen celebrities in it. So some people didn't go look at it. Mm-hmm. But once they start to see like real people, real life people that look like them in it, that was like my influencers. They was like my brand ambassadors from the beginning because yeah. I always posted my customers in Milano, yeah. like always from the beginning. Did some did something happen along this journey where it's like one year just was like breakout, like it just explosion. So before this, before the one million, I had like seven hundred thousand, mm-hmm. twenty fifteen, yep. and then or and then three hundred thousand. It was like it's like a it was like a build up. Yeah, so it was like sure. every year was just building up. It wasn't like it was like an overnight thing, and got it just it was it. just like the cells just build up over every every year. Got it. Got it. Um, that makes sense. Actually. But but the celebrities definitely helped a lot. Yeah. What's the like gold standard of candles? Like, what is the, what is the candle company who like owns the game? Um, Bath and Body Works. Really? I would say. Candles? It, well, they have a lot of customers. I don't shop there. Their their candles have chemicals in it. Another thing I didn't mention about mine is they're hundred percent like natural. Everything from the wick, the fragrance, the wax. So, but I would say Bath and Body Works. But that's why, not that's why, but that's kind of like an opportunity. Because think about candle companies. People who think about Bath and Body Works, it's kind of old and outdated. People want something more modern they can relate to. It's kind of like an old system. It have, if it hasn't been replaced in years, people are looking for a new brand, a new business, and that's where Good Day Sense come in. And honestly, sure. I haven't met anybody else that's really taken that stride in the home goods or candle yeah. industry. And then, like I said, how I got into it was just through a situation, and I've just been diving deep into knowing more about candles, the knowledge, other home goods, products. Um, Yeah, man, so it's been a journey. Good. 2018. So 2018, you start, you have this idea, I'm going to make some candles. Yeah. You're working on your, your formula for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But what was, do you remember your first sale? Yeah. So my was first it? sale, remember I told you I was a teacher in, in D.C., teaching pre-K-3. So they actually did a pop-up shop in February there. Um, and I was like, you know what? I've been 
side hustling in 2018. Let me get out there and see what's up. Um, and I did a pop up. I think I had a hundred candles, and I sold out of all a hundred in like an hour. Mm. And then, then I was like, damn, maybe it's a business idea because people always jump from a passion or a side hustle into the business. I wanted to do research and development and really know, like, damn, I'm going to do this for sure. And then when I did that pop up, it was over because in 2018 I was giving them out for free. 2019 I sold them. Oh, wow. And then 2020, the pandemic happened. Things went crazy. Yeah. People were in their home, and you burn candles in your house. So I think it was timing, and just like I was just on it. And I mm. saw my opportunity, and I ran with it as a black man selling candles, not really yeah. knowing about the industry, but jumping into it, knowing that it wasn't a money grab. Like, I was really yeah. passionate about it, and it kind of grew on me. Gotcha. So you're doing, do you know, like, how much you sold the first year that you started? Sales wise. Oh, but you gave them away in 2018. Yeah, so 2018, it was... 2019 was your sales. 2019, we did 30,000. 30,000. Yeah. What about 2020? 2020, we did... You're in a pandemic? We did 70. And that's 70. when Chad and Lowe's came aboard about, like, the end of that year, around November. A part of your business model is... So I'm actually going to light one of these, because you got your own Good Day Sense lighter, lighter yeah. so this is dope. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that's probably yeah. did a little thing right there. Push it down, and then, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a good and then the reason behind that is with candles, sometimes they get low and you burn your fingers. So we have the extendable lighters and they bend as well. So it helps the customer. Gotcha. So everything has a meaning or, you know, purpose. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah. What am I, what am I lighting right now? What is it meant to be? Yeah. So the name of it is meant to, and that's another thing with the name of how we name our candles, but the name of this one is meant to be the scent is actually a mint mojito scent. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. So a part of your model isn't just selling candles retail. A part of your business model. Oh, and it moves. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. And you could bend it too. Yeah. I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. No, this is hard. But yeah. Um, So you'll find somebody and say, I'll do a candle for you. It has to make sense though. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. What does make sense mean? Like they had, he, it's not a money grab. They either have to be into candles, light candles. Really? And Boosie love candles because it's like. Let's say you you just selling a product. If you partner with somebody, they, but they not really into it, you're just selling it or just doing it for money. So Whenever what? I partner with, that's what you sell products. Yeah, for, but for, but for me, it's it's a part of integrity. Like I don't want to give somebody a candle who's just adding it to. The, I mean, we can do that, but that's a private label situation where like I make the candle for them and put their sticker on it. But if I partner or collab with somebody and it has good day sense on it, they either have to be a lover of candles, it's meaningful to them, or some other rationale that makes sense. So it's just not like, yo, we're doing it because you're popular. We're going to make a candle. It has to make sense. Carlos loves candles, and Boosie loves candles. He actually had a video where he almost got his clothes on fire because he put a, his clothes on candles. So it has to make uh, sense. So, but up to this day, I did a collab yeah, with me, Boosie. And, uh, if Cardi B come to you and say, I hate candles, but it's a good idea. I'm selling them out. You about to make that candle. Facts, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Let's just uh, be 100% here. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so with the, with the model of it, though, mm -hmm. the person pays for the initial run, and then you give them a percentage? It depends. So they can either, um, how did I do it? So they can either, if we collab on it like it's on my website we both selling it i have them pay for the materials but they don't pay me for my time making the candles so they pay for the materials we sell them and then we split the profit 50 50 because mm -hmm. on their end they don't have to do any work i'm shipping and fulfilling the orders they don't have to make the candles they yeah. just pay for the materials and then we just split it down the middle 50 50 gotcha. which on their end it's like if they don't have to do any work but just promote and buy the materials they, like you asked me about the margins the margins are definitely great. So they pay for the materials. Like I said, I make them, fulfill them, and then I just send them their money every week, every month, whatever so the agreement might be. How, so this one right here, how mm -hmm. much does this cost to make? That one cost. Packed and everything. Jar, wick. About uh, $6. How much you sell it for? 30 30 Good profit margin. Mm -hmm. But I guess, it, and people aren't paying for the candle per se, they're paying for the fact that you spent years Creating a fragrance that's going to mm -hmm. change the way their house smells. Yeah, and they like the branding, the names. Um, and that's one, another code I cracked because when I first started, I was like, damn, can I really get people to buy candles online? Think about it. You can't smell through your computer. That's so a fact. So the way you get the customer is that. the branding and the naming. And then once you get them in your database, then you have them locked in and they buy one candle and then they start to try all the others. Gotcha. 